yes so students welcome back to one more session we, i've already given you the different clues and tricks for finding the log i taught you the lo how to find a log uh, up to its approximation then i also gave a uh, uh, this one trick for applying to the nernst the equation then i took you to how to i took you to a topic where i showed you how to get a perfect log right with that all the things have kept together in the playlist so whenever you have a doubt in the log value finding a log value you can go to the playlist and check everything so whoever has doubt in finding log anti log everything will be cleared right as you know i have completed the bahadur chemistry numericals isn't it so what i thought is i'll try to put all the new like formulas whatever are related to the bahadur chemistry <clears throat> together in one paper so what is the use of this so first of all already you've done numericals like this would give you a summary of all the formulas see basically now what students do they try to write the formulas first then understand the concept then basically the rule is understand the concept uh, write procure all the formulas together and then start applying the numericals so what i felt is see i want your burden to go less i want the students to get good marks in chemistry the three is in I have clubbed all the new formulas which are there in structure of atom together. Let's see. So basically, all the formulas I have clubbed. And let's see the first one. What is this? Mass of an electron at height speed. Okay, this is the formula which we apply for finding the mass of the electron. In the question, if they ask you find the mass of the electron of at high speed directly, you can write as m is equal to m by. Okay, I'm, I'll not read it out because you can directly see the formula. This is the formula which you apply for mass of the electron. Next, when frequency is given to you, you very well know it is denoted by nu, which is equal to c by lambda. This we have done. So first, first formula directly you can apply where we can take m is the mass of this particular uh, that particular uh, it's one body in rest, and u is the velocity of electron, and c is the velocity of light. We'll be giving you the values directly apply in the formula. Here frequency is also the same. C is the velocity of light, and lambda is the wavelength. Right? When I have to find the energy of the photon, right? So energy of the photon. What is the formula? E is equal to h nu. We very well know nu is equal to c by lambda. Yes. So this is one formula for finding energy of the photon if they ask you in the question which i did suppose if this lambda is given in angstroms you need to apply this formula e means e value it can be equal to 12375 by lambda electron volts so you can note this formula directly apply it to the numerical next formula which you need to remember here is electronic energy change during transition so when you are learning bohr's uh, hydrogen uh, this in spectrum isn't it? there are lot of numericals which will give you which will give you or which Will be asking you to calculate the transition states. Fine. So this electronic energy change during transition. So we know very well know delta E is equal to E n two minus n one. But there is two there are two things which you should remember. That is n two is always greater than n one. Right? Higher energy level compared to the lower energy level. There are two things. One would be emission spectrum. One would be absorption spectrum. Suppose if emission spectrum, right? In emission spectrum, the electron jumps from n two to n one. Then only it emit uh, energy radiation, isn't it? Right. Absorption spectrum means when it uh, the electron excites from n one to n two. Remember this, right? So here you need to see in the numerical whether emission is given to you or absorption is given to you. Then apply this formula. Done. Right. Next one, radius of nth bore orbit. So to find the radius of nth bore orbit, there is actually a derivation, a long derivation which I thought I'll derive it for you. But here, you know, for uh, CBSE grade eleven, it is only the formula which is directly given. If you wish uh, me to do that, I'll wish uh, like I love to explain that uh, derivation also. Right. For radius, calculating the radius of bore orbit, direct there is a direct formula which you can use. R n is equal to n square h square by four pi square m e square. Right. Now R one value it is equal to zero. 0.529 angstroms. This one, this particular one, you very well know radius of hydrogen atom. So if they give you in the numerical radius of hydrogen to find the radius of hydrogen atom, then you need to use this. Suppose if they ask you radius of hydrogen-like atoms, then the formula is R1 uh, for uh, this one uh, H as well as Z divided by the atomic number. So you should see whether they ask you hydrogen atom or they ask you hydrogen-like atom. Okay, you need to be careful in that case. Fine. So let's come back and see the next formula. Suppose if they ask me to find velocity. Okay, yes, velocity. You very well know formula for velocity of electron in nth bore orbit. So velocity is nothing but u, right? Nth bore orbit. That's why I have taken. U N. They'll be you will be directly asked to do this because they'll ask you find the velocity of electron in the bore nth orbit of hydrogen atom. That is for what Bohr has given us a date. So the formula is two pi e squared by 
hn right but so u value for hydrogen also is given u value of hydrogen like atom also is given this is the formula and that is when they ask you hydrogen like atom that particular hydrogen like atom you multiply with the atomic number u1 is already given 2.187 into the atomic number of that element right so now energy of electron in nth bohr orbit of hydrogen so this is a velocity formula this is a energy formula so this is a formula which you all also have a derivation but not in your cbsc right so here again i have given two values one is energy for hydrogen atom is so much in ergs as well as the electron volts energy for hydrogen like atom what you what should you do see if it is velocity i multiply with h into z if it is energy of electron uh, hydrogen like atom you will multiply this h value this value into z square Okay, the particular uh, uh, element, atomic number, and square of that. So remember, this is the velocity formula. This is the energy formula. Next formula, which you should remember, wavelength, right? Basically, numericals will be asked in finding velocity. They'll ask you to find wavelength, right? So transition also. Now, when I have, a, I have to speak about wavelength calculation. So the formula for calculating wavelength emitted during transition in hydrogen atom. So we very well know wavelength. Or the wave number. Wave number is inverse of wavelength, isn't it? Right. So here, one by lambda. One by lambda is nothing but nu bar, which is equal to R H. That is Rydberg constant. One by n one square minus n two square. I did a numerical also with this. Fine. This can be further written as this one in CGHS unit. Okay. This whole thing in CGHS when I want, I am multiplying with this factor. Right. Fine. So here you know m is a mass. C is the velocity, and uh, this one is the Planck's constant. Now, mostly is law. You'll be using this mostly law in the periodic classification of elements also. So, root uh, nu is equal to a into z minus b. So, what is this? Nu is a frequency. This one, okay. Z. What do you say? It is the atomic number. A uh, like uh, the mass number. Fine. Okay. No, not mass number. I'm sorry. Z is atomic number. A are the two elements which you're taking. Fine. So, next one. Uh, when I have to speak about average atomic weight. So, average atomic weight. This is the formula summation of a1 into x1 and summation of x total total because uh, when you do with the isotopic masses and all these you need to apply this formula right so data will be given directly to you this is the mass number this is what it's existing you need to just apply in the formula now photoelectric effect formula so photoelectric effect we have already seen the concept there you'll be uh, i showed you the concept how will the array enter so h nu is equal to <coughs> that one which is equal to w plus that is your work function uh, plus half mv square hope you remember the concept go back to the concept and see you will understand so what you do is uh, uh, go back to the concept learn the concept come back to the formula right h nu is equal to the work function plus half mv square so as i say h nu is equal to ionization energy plus kinetic energy ionization energy is this one uh, which depends which varies with different metals half mv square is this one so possible transition next formula possible transition for a, a jump from n1 n2 to n1 so what is a possible transition if they ask you find the possible transitions in the particular numerical then you need to do, take this formula summation of n2 minus n1 okay so this is one formula for finding the possible transitions because this word will be given in the numerical directly right let, let us see the next formula that is angular momentum of an electron in an orbit there are two things angular momentum of electron in an orbit angular momentum of electron in an orbital both the formulas i have given here okay hope this is n into h by 2 pi directly this is the planck's constant value they will give you n the principal constant number so angular momentum of electron in orbital that is h by 2 pi into root l into l plus 1 this is the azimuthal quantum number right so it is directly application they will give you find the angular momentum of an orbit means you will apply the first one if they ask you find the orbital angular momentum of in an uh, orbital then you will apply the second one now coming to quantum numbers if they ask you to find the total spin this is the formula plus or minus half into n where n is the number of unpaid electrons it varies with every element it isn't it? If the element is different after applying Hunt's rule, you'll be finding the number of unpaid electrons. Now, magnetic moment of an atom. Magnetic moment of an atom is denoted by root n into n plus 2. Okay, this is the formula for finding the magnetic moment. Again, n is the number of unpaid electrons. Just now I said, isn't it? It varies with different different elements, and you need to find that. So take the atomic number, write the electronic configuration according to Argo principle, fill in the S, S P and uh, D and F orbital, then 
find the number of unpaid electrons now nodal planes so this is the last topic that is angle finding angular nodes and radial nodes so uh, after this um, this one uh, uh, uploading the form video for formulas i will be doing the angular nodes and uh, radial nodes and shorting the equation finish of the chapter so radial nodes formula is the principal quantum number minus azimuthal quantum number minus 1 angular nodes is nothing but l total nodes is equal to n minus 1 okay i'll be apply uh, doing the concept you will better understand that now de broglie equation i already did the numerical lambda is equal to h by mv which is further can be written as in this formula okay they may they'll ask you this one direct application or you'll be having this also so where lambda here is wavelength mass of the mass we understood nu is the velocity of the particle done so next one would be last but not the least heisenberg uncertainty principle so in heisenberg uncertainty principle we have the formula delta p into delta x greater than uh, for h by 4 pi we already studied isn't it this is p is a momentum right so this can be written as you basically uh, this momentum m into v isn't it so i have written that thing and what did i do i took that mass here nothing basically this quantity is m into v m m into delta v so i took th that delta is here only that mass i took it down so both the formulas will be useful for the solving the numericals so i have ended up saying delta p is uncertainty in momentum delta u is uncertainty in velocity delta x is uncertainty in position m is the mass of the subatomic particle right fine so in, both the formulas can be applied if they ask you to find the heisenberg uncertainty principle they may see h is planck's constant to 4 into 3.14 pi value right they may ask you to find this one they may ask you to find this one or they may ask you to find this one either way this is a formula which you can directly apply so students these are the formulas which are there uh, for your in your structure of atom hope all the new Numericals are clear, and I expect you all to practice the numericals and come back to me with doubts. Thank you for watching. Stay connected.